Recording has started, Terry. Thank you. And Jillian, when, when we get through the countdown then, um, did you want to do a three second delay to starting the prompter? And do we leave it at the speed that we had it at before? Yeah, it's about where it should be. I'm good about pausing it. So Excellent. We're going to lose a light. We're going to lose a camera. So we're going to bring them in one by one then, Landon? Yep, we're starting with Aaron. Aaron, Jessica, Tom. Aaron, Jessica, Tom, yep. Great. So then I won't do a lead-in then, guys. When you're on then, you can just go straight into the intros. All right, so it's 4.59. I'm going to start the broadcast and the countdown. Thank you for joining us today for the AAF Omaha October Virtual Ag Connect panel discussion, Can Everyone Hear Me? I am Alec Ray, Managing Partner and Director of Sales and Marketing at Frost Media Group. I serve on the Board of Directors and co-chair the Membership Committee with Paula Stinson from Paula Presents. AAF Omaha has been offering a wide range of professional development programs, webinar, thought leader discussions, and fun virtual activities for our members over the past six months. Our goal is to continue to offer virtual programming in the coming months, but do anticipate coming back in, to in-person events after the first of the year, when it's safe for our members to gather following CDC guidelines. So please grab your beverage of choice and we will get today's panel discussion started in the next few minutes. At the end of this discussion, there will be a Q&A, so please feel free to leave a comment and we will answer those at the end. 
AEF Omaha is the unifying voice for advertising in the Omaha and Council Bluffs metropolitan area. As an organization, our goal is to educate, inspire, and bring an inclusive sense of community to our advertising professionals in the area that we and future generations can continue to do work in that we love. Events like today's Ad Connects are free to our members and are one of the many benefits of membership. Our board of directors and active committees have been working to bring more value and benefit to your membership throughout the year. Our members are given the opportunity to meet new people, engage with experts, and receive professional development through educational programming offered monthly. And we will continue to create new ways to engage our membership and the Nebraska advertising community through this pandemic. If online living and networking isn't your thing, don't despair. We have invited our panelists to help navigate networking opportunities online. And with that, I'd like to thank our panelists for joining us today to share their insights and tips to networking in a virtual world. And now I'd like to introduce today's panelists, Aaron Van Zee, Communications Director at RDG Planning and Design, Jessica Schmitz, Recruiter at LRS Healthcare, and last, Tom Woody, Business Development Manager for Freeman. Now, starting with Aaron, would you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. Aaron Van Zee here. I am the Communications Director at RDG Planning and Design, which is an architecture interiors planning firm. Um, in that role, I pretty much just oversee the firm's global communications and PR strategies, so really responsible for a lot of the internal and external communications. I've been a native of Omaha for basically my entire life. Um, so I graduated from UNO with a master's degree. I've been in the community for a long time, in the industry for a long time, and I'm very excited to be here tonight to talk to you about the virtual networking experience and how you can maximize that for your own benefit. Uh, my name is Jess. Uh, I am currently serving um, as the communications co-chair on AAF Omaha board. Um, I just recently graduated from the University of South Dakota back in May. So I actually just moved to Omaha here in June, um, where I started my first position at LRS Healthcare. So I am a recruiter there, um, but also very excited to be speaking with you guys tonight on the panel. And my name is Tom Woody. I am a business development manager at Freeman, uh, a brand experience company, uh, where I work in productions, both both in person when we're able to have them, as well as virtually. Uh, now, I am also uh, past president of AAF Des Moines and current uh, governor of AAF District 9, which represents Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, and of course, the great state of Nebraska there. Awesome. And thank you so much. And that's why we're here, right? Because we've been having to work virtually. So we look forward to your insights. To really get today started, let's start with you, Aaron. Uh, can you share with us as a communicator what you have found successful in the past few months when working a virtual room? Sure. Yeah, I think, you know, we, we talk about a virtual room like it's vastly different than a lot of other rooms that we're in physically, but a lot of the key sort of basic um, best practices, I think, still apply. So when you think about what makes a good networking opportunity, you think about connecting with people on an authentic basis, bringing your authentic self to the table. Um, and so I think that is still critical when you're in those virtual rooms, just being who you are in the room. Um, but also, you know, we, we have the very thing in front of us that often distracts us the most that we actually use to engage in these virtual experiences. And so I think limiting distractions is really critical so that you can actively listen to what is being said and respond and engage in a really meaningful way without having a bunch of other things going on. So I found that minimizing those distractions, you know, not having my email up, not trying to do a bunch of other things while I'm focused on these virtual networking opportunities is really critical for making those connections. Otherwise, I'm, I'm too distracted and not really paying enough attention to what's actually in front of me, which is really important. Um, and I think the other thing is that you know, we have to make the most of the time that we have in those spaces. Our time tends to be a little bit limited. You know, we don't want to be sitting 
on a Zoom call. I mean, I don't for hours and hours on end. So typically these events are an hour at most. So you really have to maximize that time, you know, make sure that you communicate well and clearly um, leverage that chat opportunity to leave your information there so people can quickly reference it if they need to. And then I think also a critical component is being okay with sitting in silence, not necessarily always having to be the one to talk, but listening to what other people are saying so that you can respond to them in a meaningful way is really critical. I think that's great. Uh, Tom, Jessica, is there anything else that you would like to add or any thoughts on that? Um, I think Erin kind of covered it. I think she made a really good point. It's really important to eliminate distractions that are around you. It's easy when you're working from home or at home, you know, your phone's right there, your TV's right there, the kitchen's right there. So really engaging in what you're doing and making sure that you're present in these virtual um, events. Yeah, and I would just say Aaron made a great point of, you know, being comfortable in silence. And uh, it might not be being, being comfortable in silence, but really taking in and engaging, um, you know, absorbing that information so you can have a, a productive conversation is really important. No, I agree. And, you know, and I think the thing that really resonated with me was, uh, you know, just saying, you know, being focused, right? no one wants to be on virtual all day, every day. So really having a game plan and really, you know, honing in on that, I think is really good. So thank you for that. I also want to do say for anyone that is joining us right now, we do have Q and A that's going to be going on at the end of this. So as our panelists are talking, as they are going through, uh, you know, some of their answers and you think of something, please use the Q and A button at the bottom, leave your question and we will make sure and get to that at the end. Uh, we have a pretty comprehensive list of questions here but we will get to uh, most, if not all of the Q and A's, but just keep sending those in. So on to the next question here, uh, and this one's for you, Tom. We know as an AAF local district and national leader, uh, you've been spending a lot of time reaching out, networking, engaging with advertising and marketing professionals across the country. Uh, could you share with us some specific networking virtual events that you've been a part of and uh, you know, w what have they done well and why? Yeah, and you know, I'm glad that you bring that up because uh, even before COVID, I was very involved in AAF and networking actively. Uh, I, I spent some time over in Omaha uh, for the American Advertising Awards and uh, I've attended Boom Roasted and some other events there. So that has been something that I've always been passionate about. I've traveled across the US to different events, um, whether it be for work uh, or, or for pleasure, but I always tried to connect with the local ad club to see if something was going on. So I just carried that through and it actually made it a lot more affordable and a lot more uh, easy to, to really access. So I've hopped on some great conversations with uh, folks like AF Mobile Bay. Um, they actually saw me engage and said, hey, you're a, a leader and you know AAF, would you come judge our American advertising uh, awards this year, uh, virtually, of course, but that was a, a great one. I've engaged with a lot of folks in DC um, through their club, uh, Add2, which is a, a 32 and under program within AAF in certain markets, has a really great following. And if you're in Add2, it's not just colleagues, it's really friends and you build these friendships. So it's been really great to connect with so many people that I I don't get to see whether they're in Dallas or uh, I stayed up late one night for uh, an event that was 11 o'clock central time for uh, AAF Honolulu. So those are some great networking events, but I would say just in a leadership role, we've also been able to engage with our board members and our, our presidents uh, at the district level a lot better because we're spread across those four states and we don't have that face-to-face -face interaction uh, or we do maybe once a year. So it's been really great as, you know, organizing leaders and, and trying to get these uh, clubs to really be effective in COVID times. Uh, we've really been able to connect a lot more one-on-one. Uh, -on -one, so. Sure. And let me ask kind of a, just a follow-up to that question too. You know, when you're going through these virtual events, um, you know, are you really finding these to be, you know, successful or as successful when you were doing all that networking before? I mean, are you still finding that same kind of result 
from being able to, you know, maybe connect with people faster? Yeah, I would say it's a lot uh, easier when I, I have a conversation with somebody from Baltimore and they say, oh, Tom, what do you do? I said, well, actually, I'm in Des Moines, Iowa. And they're like, wow, but you work with Freeman. I know Freeman just down the road in uh, Bethesda. I was like, yep, same Freeman. So it's making that connection just in a different way, uh, which has been helpful. Uh, and then through AAF, it's, it's been a lot of just personal relationships and connecting with folks again. Sure. And now opening it up to, you know, Jessica and Aaron, you know, are there any events that you guys have been a part of and are you seeing, you know, success? Yeah, I, so part of the reason why I'm here is because I'm a part of Leadership Omaha, which for those who don't know, Leadership Omaha is a, a program in Omaha that is, um, they select a group of people every year to go through this program. Typically it's done in person. But of course this year, our entire sessions are being done. They're day long sessions they are like eight hours um, done virtually over Zoom. Normally we would be going and visiting different places and speaking with nonprofits. Now we're doing all of that over video, which is a little bit of an adjustment, but we've done a really good job in there because there's, there's about 49 of us, I think. And it's, it can be difficult to get to know people individually when you're in a large group like that. So they've done a really good job of breaking us out into small groups and using the breakout session, breakout group session uh, function of Zoom to kind of allow us to have those more intimate conversations with one another. I think part of why that works so well is that we also come to those small breakout groups with a prescribed sort of set of questions to talk about. Because sometimes if you have people in those breakout rooms and they don't really know what they should be talking about, there ends up being either one person just talking because like we talked about before, they don't feel comfortable in the silence, or you just kind of sit there like staring at each other, waiting for someone to speak. So I think they've done a really good job of allowing us to have those more intimate small group conversations but also making sure that those those intimate small group conversations are really intentional and focused, which just allows the conversation to move a little more naturally. That's yeah, I think, I mean, just touching on what we talked about before, treating it as an in-person event and making sure you're um, engaged and you know, you know, what you're, what's going on. And like Aaron mentioned, when you go into those small um, breakout sessions, it really allows you to, you know, let your voice be heard. I know sometimes when you're on like a huge Zoom call and there's like 50 plus people, you don't really get your word in. So I think those breakout sessions are really helpful um, and, you know, help you connect on a more personal level um, with more people than what you would be doing if, like I said, you were just listening to 50 plus people kind of chime in every so often, so. Yeah, and to add to that, I would say, you know, as Tom was talking about like meeting people and the question of, is it still as effective? I think it's only as effective as your participation in it and also the amount of follow through that you do, right? So like, with regular in-person networking, typically you don't just meet someone once and like never talk to them again if you're really intention intentional about it. I think the same is true for these digital events. If you meet someone or you connect with someone or you even just see someone in a group that you are interested in, in knowing better or reaching out to, then follow up with them. Take those times of inactivity outside of the virtual world to connect with them on LinkedIn or shoot them a message somewhere to continue building that relationship because it's certainly not going to get built via one hour Zoom calls at all. No, I think it's great. Um, and you know, let's go back to, to you, Jessica. We have a, a question. You know, as a recent graduate and you know, getting your young professional life started and having to enter a much different world than what most of us have experienced, you know, how have you been making the most of virtual networking events? And really besides live virtual networking events, you know, what are you doing to keep meeting local people online and still have meaningful, you know, development opportunities? Right. I mean, like Aaron said, you meet one person, someone on Zoom one time, you're not going to make that connection right then and there. So it's important to be following up. Um, so I really, really utilize LinkedIn. So I'm constantly adding new people on LinkedIn. And I think when it comes to LinkedIn, I mean, you can have as many connections 
as you want, but if you're not reaching out and making that initial, you know, maybe giving your elevator speech, I guess, in a message, I think you're going to stick out a lot more um, and be able to build a more personal connection with that person if you actually message them and have a real conversation with them. Um, so besides LinkedIn, also, I think it's really important. I mean, as a recent graduate there, I have classmates, I have professors, you know, people that graduated before me and entered the workforce before me, take advantage of those people, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to those people you were, um, you know, in the same boat as them at one point, you never know how they may be able to help you out or vice versa. Um, I wouldn't even be on the AFO board um, if I hadn't reached out to um, a former college peer. So like I said, don't be afraid to reach out to those people. They will help you. If someone can help you, they're going to help you. Um, so really take advantage of that. Don't be afraid to add people that you don't know on LinkedIn. And like I said, make sure you introduce yourself so they know why you added them in the first place. Sure. Now, you know, Aaron and Tom, I, you know, certainly I don't think you guys are recent graduates, but, you know, maybe you have been working around some of some new college graduates too, you know, have you seen them really take advantage of technology in a way that's beneficial? And, you know, how are you seeing people that maybe you work around? How, how are they also kind of adapting to this new normal? Yeah, well, I've got a, a couple great thoughts on that because I work for a company that has thousands of employees. And now I'm working with a ton of people that I've never worked with before. And I'm still like a year into the company. So I got launched into a whole new world and a whole lot of new people. So it's been connecting with my colleagues that, you know, I work with day in, day out, and we're just constantly grinding, but, you know, taking a moment to say, hey, our virtual platform that we're really proud of just celebrated five or six months. Let's all get on a fun little trivia happy hour and connect. Um, so there's that connection. But you know, from the student side of things, and I'll make a, a shameless plug for AAF, uh, I'll be a breakout speaker at their uh, National Student Advertising Career Conference next weekend. So uh, there's plenty of information about that. And I know AAF Omaha has been promoting it. But I, I am excited to see how these students are coming to a career conference to network and try to, you know, find a, a job and a, a new kind of sense of, you know, there's a job market, yes, but it's so crowded and so different. So I'm excited about that, but also uh, ran the national student advertising competition last year for district nine. And it's so impressive. These students came and they presented their pitch to these judges and a national judge from Adobe. And it was flawless. Like there were no hiccups. It was all pre-recorded content, but then they came on for live question and answer. And these kids were just, you know, super sharp. So I think the younger folks have a, a distinct advantage uh, because they are now learning and they already knew a lot of the, the platforms and software out there. So true. When we come, well, I'm not going to speak for Tom or anyone else, but when I graduated college, it makes me sound like an old lady, those things were not really as ubiquitous as they are now. So it's certainly an advantage. I will say, you know, something, we talk a lot about technology and leveraging technology. And I'll, I'll preface this by saying as a, a millennial, an old millennial, albeit, but a millennial nonetheless, it pains me a little bit to say this, but there is something powerful about a telephone call nowadays because we literally don't really do that anymore. And especially right now, we spend a lot of time video conferencing, but sometimes a simple phone call is more powerful and more impactful than a virtual event because we've literally been doing that for all this time. So I think, you know, sometimes if you're looking for a way to connect with someone on a different level and the in-person opportunity isn't there, that a phone call might be another way to do that and sort of set yourself apart because those are becoming more and more rare in this digital virtual world that we're living in. And I would say, go back on something that we touched on about eliminating distractions, um, just because I've been guilty of it, but I've had really good engagement uh, utilizing the chat feature, uh, whether it be through Zoom, uh, like I called out, Lieutenant Governor Lisa Conklin from District 9, who I see is in the crowd. But seeing these people uh, in these group Zooms, 
I can't just have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them, but I can send them a message privately or I can shoot them a text. And I just did the same thing with my friend Marissa in Dallas. I saw her on a call. I said, oh my gosh, you just got married. How was it? And we're still engaged with what's going on, but we're having our, our own little catch-up session. So I, I definitely say take advantage if you're not presenting or talking that chat feature, it's there for a reason. You know, that, that side chat that we get when we do go to in-person meetings and, you know, that the humanizing side, right? You know, because these Zoom meetings are so focused, they're compressed into, say, 45 minutes and everyone has to just get to it. And that's a great point, you know, remembering to humanize the experience, you know, it's still embracing that socialization aspect of connecting with others. And um, this isn't really related. And you mentioned uh, making a phone call. Um, I actually did send a fax a couple of days ago. So, um there still is other technology out there to engage. Uh, Did you send it on one of the very last fax machines that ever? Yeah, like a modem, it had to dial, yeah. dial through. Yes, yeah. is like, what's a fax? <laughs> They're primitive email. Faxes, I'm not that young. Okay, okay. So let, let's move on to the next question here. So this is actually going to be an open uh, panel question. Um, so prior to joining a virtual networking event, and we kind of touched on this, but maybe think of some other things. But you know, outside of being, you know, sitting in silence and preparing, so what are some other things that you can think of that really help dial in a virtual networking event or a, a meeting? Yeah, I would say, you know, go to it like you would any other event. I mean, I'm not going to throw on my name tag because it's got my name right there. But I would still you know, come in a, a collared shirt or something that I would wear uh, that I want to, you know, people to engage with me and think that I'm presentable. I wear bow ties on Wednesdays. Uh, it's a fun thing that I do to break up the middle of the week, but it's also a great conversation starter. Every once in a while, I'll move something weird into my background because it's a conversation starter. Um, but to that dress point, you know, I ran a program virtually for my fraternity's 45th anniversary of its founding. And we invited the undergraduate members to come and hopped on a networking event after the program. And every single one of them was in a suit and tie. And I was blown away. I was super impressed. I was wearing that because I was presenting, but every single one of these guys were just sitting in their dorm room in a suit and tie. So uh, that was very impactful for me. Uh, but yeah, just come to it like you would prepared to any other networking. Yeah, and I think kind of piggybacking off of that too, I feel like part of it is also just like really knowing your, this, I hate this phrase, but I'm going to use it anyway, your personal brand. Like, who are you? Think about that before you come into a room and make sure that the way that you're presenting yourself, whether it's through the way that you dress or the way that you talk or the way that you interact is authentic to who you are. Like, I would probably not show up in a suit and tie for most events because that's not really who I am. But if that is, you know, the kind of projection that you want to put forth because it's a particular room that you want to be that part of yourself, then, you know, think about that because we all have different sides of ourselves, but even in those sides, we still want to be who we are authentically. And I think people can pick up on when you're not being authentic. And especially in a room like this, where, you know, we're not even seeing the other participants. So it's really hard to, to engage with them in that way. You really just have to take advantage of, I have this little box and in this box, I have a microphone and those are the only tools that I have. So I have to use it to my advantage and really just be who I am. And so that when people are able to maybe finally meet me in person, that that is not vastly different than the person they've been seeing on the screen. So I think authenticity is also just really important in thinking about how you're projecting yourself and whether that's really who you are or if you're trying to you know, project something that's not you. Because eventually, hopefully, we'll get to meet each other in person and you would hate to have that you be so different than the you that you've put out on a Zoom call. You know, and I have, yeah. I have a point to that. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I cut you off. Oh, you go. Okay, I will. Um, and, you know, I think that's really good, you know, being personally honest, personally genuine, but, you know, I work in production. So even for me prepping for a, a virtual networking event, you know, I'm actually really conscious about my setup. Uh, you know, 
how where my computer is. I don't want it looking up my nose. I, you know, I want the lighting right. I, I don't want to be just seeing against a white wall. And I think, you know, even paying attention to the way that even if you are being genuine, what is the environment that you're in that you're projecting yourself? You know, poor lighting, uh, you know, bad sound, uh, you know, a, a really awkward, you know, rafters in your basement kind of setup. I mean, those are, you know, nonverbal signals that you're also giving out. You know, and, and Tom, just as you were saying, you know, you want to dress it to impress, even if you are on camera. And I think it's the same way about how we're presenting ourselves in our house. It comes off exactly the same. Speaking of poor lighting, I guess I'm a bad example as the sun's like sh shining through in my little box. But um, what I was going to say is just like Aaron said, I mean, first impressions are really important. You don't ever get the opportunity to make that first impression again. So um, it's important to be prepared coming into this event, you know, know what you're trying to get out of this event. Do you have, you know, specific goals or objectives that you're trying to meet with this event? So be prepared, know what you're getting yourself into. That way you can really make the most out of it. I mean, who knows how long we're going to be doing virtual networking, networking events might as well get used to it. So um, yeah, like I said, just be prepared and treat it as if you are going to be in person. Yeah. And I would say additionally, utilize, you know, your, your camera. That's what you're there for. You're at, I understand that there's sometimes instances that you have to go off camera, but make sure that when you do, you have a photo set that still shows who you are because it, it doesn't necessarily annoy me, but I'm like, God, I, I see that Aaron went off camera. I really liked engaging and I, you know, I can't look at a name the same that I can a face because when I'm, you can see I'm using my hands, I'm still acting like I'm in person because I, I love these kind of engagements and I'm looking at Aaron on my screen because that's, that's just me. I'm a face-to-face -face guy, but uh, definitely utilize your camera. And then if you're forced not to utilize your camera or you can't, um, put your photo out there. No, that's, that's, that's great. I mean, those are all really good little pieces of advice. Um, and, I, and I think another point, and this kind of brings us on to kind of the other open question that we have, you know, are any of you actually personally budgeting time in the week that you're devoting to, you know, being virtual, um, you know, and, and how many of those hours per day or the week are you actually truly willing to devote to onward, like online networking? Are you just relying on meetings coming in? You know, are you budgeting time to physically go out there and set up your own meetings and your own interactions with people? You know, like, are you using online forums? Are you keeping profiles? You know, what else are you doing to budget your time networking virtually? If not with video, then what else are you doing? Go ahead, Darren. Um, well, Jessica had mentioned LinkedIn earlier. I think there's a lot of opportunities there to really reach people. You know, there was always that opportunity, but now you kind of leverage that a little bit more. So spending time um, thinking, I mean, for me, a lot of it is like what's going on in the industry, really understanding what's going on in our industry and how we can engage in some critical conversations around those issues or trends or whatever they might be. So looking for opportunities to share about that. Um, I do think that, you know, like being a communications director, some of what I do is external a lot of what I do is external communications. So, you know, thinking about um, engaging with the people who are engaging with the content that I'm sharing and not just like letting it sit there, really responding to things, um, you know, commenting back, trying to have some of those spontaneous interactions that you usually get when you're in person with people, but just trying to have those conversations and spontaneous things um, online through, you know, social media has also been something that I've focused a little bit more time and attention on. Um, but I would say I don't necessarily make time for the networking, but I do, I will say that I'm much more open and um, receptive to invitations for networking now than I might've been previously. Part of it is just my introverted personality. I don't really like being at networking events, but these kind of events I do like because I stay in my house and I don't have to really actually physically be there. 
right. I'm not saying that's a model for success because certainly it, it's not always, but I think we have a really unique opportunity for people who don't necessarily feel hundred percent comfortable doing those like physical networking opportunities. I say, if you have an invitation or there's an opportunity to engage in these virtual situations, they can be a great precursor to having those in-person events. And they can kind of be a little bit like dipping your toe in the water without going all the way in at once. Um, so I think, you know, for me, it's been more about taking advantage of those opportunities and, and saying yes a little bit more because the commitment level is actually a little bit less when you think about it. Yeah, and I would say it's okay to stay introverted. If you're not the kind of person that, you know, Zoom fatigue is a real thing. I have gotten to the end of the day where my colleague and I usually catch up and she's like, wow, this day has really taken a lot out of you. <laughs> like, I know I'm just going to go recharge at home tonight and not do anything. Um, but I'm also the same personality um, that my, and I'll quote my friend the other day. He said, I could go to, you know, one or two of these every day of the week and not get tired of them. Um, I, I have done that before where it's been back to back. Um, but it's okay to, to miss them as well. Yeah, I think like Aaron said, it's kind of, I mean, it's easy. It's a lot less time than versus having to drive somewhere and be in person. So take advantage um, when virtual events are offered to you. Um, another thing, like she mentioned, LinkedIn, we all scroll through social media way more than we probably should. I'm guilty of it too, but maybe instead of aimlessly scrolling through Facebook or Instagram, get on your LinkedIn and connect with a couple people every day, you know, make it a goal to have new connections on a weekly basis um, and just get your name out there. And like I said, send those personal messages. You're never going to make those personal connections if you're not reaching out and putting the effort in. Yeah. And I would just echo that, you know, and you said it great, Jess, and Aaron, you said it uh, awesome as well, you know, make those connections, but it really sets it up for when you get back into person because you're going to have a connection that you've never actually met in person. But the moment that you do, it's going to be that much more productive. You're going to have so much more to talk about. So yeah, go out there and, and make the connection. And whether it's just saying, hey, do you have 15, 20 minutes to just grab coffee in the morning via Zoom and we can just talk shop. Like I'm sure that Alec and I could just talk shop about production all day if we wanted. Uh, we won't bore you with that, but it's something that we can kind of commiserate or, you know, celebrate some th cool things that we've seen. Well, now that I know that I'm going to reach out. By all means, that's what it's here for. No, and, and that's great. And I think it's all good. Um, I'm actually going to go off script here. So don't, you know, we're all good here. I'm in control. But, you know, we're talking about really, you know, what is the most valuable online networking opportunity? What are the most valuable things? But I think one thing that was really glanced over here is, you know, when we do go to these networking events or some of these things that when people did put the time in to plan something for somebody and they did participate, is there an, an, an experience that really stands out in your mind where someone actually took advantage of every single tool in the toolbox available to them to actually keep the person engaged, to make them feel uh, like they were a part of the conversation? Um, is there anything that really sticks out? I mean, like, did they send you anything in the mail? Did you have paddles? Did, were there tools? Were there, you know, anything that really, really stands out that maybe you can share with us? I was, uh, so, um... One of the other organizations I'm involved in is Latino Center of the Midlands. I'm on the board there and we have a yearly, typically it's an in-person as with many things, um, dinner, dinner fundraiser. It's the big fundraiser we have every year. And this year it was virtual. The awesome thing about that situation was that um, they hand delivered like a cocktail mixer to everybody who registered. And we made the cocktail together and we drank the cocktail together. And that was a very unique experience. Um, and I will always applaud anyone who wants to give me a cocktail. So I was already, you know, kind of, I, they had a lot of goodwill for me. I feel like that was something that was really great um, because it just engaged the audience in a different way. We were, we were actually doing something together, even though we were apart. Um, so that was a really unique experience. And I, 
I feel like a lot of people left that feeling really, really positive about it. And they were able to kind of make a connection on a different level than if we were just sitting there listening to someone talk. Yeah, I would say, you know, I, I reached back and grabbed this. Um, this is from the Iowa Agritech uh, Accelerator. And uh, my friend Afton at Corner Post Marketing was working to help them promote their upcoming accelerator event. And they sent out those mugs, but also they sent out a printed piece and it had a QR code. I mean, QR codes are making a comeback and it just took me to the registration for that. I clicked on it on my phone, was registered in 15 seconds and filled up my coffee that morning and hopped on to that, that event. So um, that really grabbed me. Uh, it wasn't the most engaging event for me personally, um, but I'm, I'm all about seeing what, what's going on out there. So uh, it definitely grabbed my attention and, and got me there, which is, was the intent. But it's memorable, right? In a, in a sea of meetings and virtual experiences, you, remember, you remembered it. And I drink coffee out of it every morning. Uh, yeah, when I was so when I was in school, I actually served on um, the exec board for our dance marathon um, organization that was on campus. So unfortunately, obviously, our 24 hour dance marathon ended up getting canceled um, because of COVID. So we switched gears like 30 days before and moved everything to online. Um, but I mean, obviously we still wanted a big showing. We still wanted people to be involved, to keep fundraising. Um, so one of the ways that we did that, so with the in-person event, normally you would be incentivized. So if you raise this much money, you get a t-shirt. If you raise this much more money, you get a water bottle, things like that. So what we did is we kept those incentives going. We made sure everyone had a t-shirt um, before the virtual event. We made sure everyone got all of their incentives mailed to them. That way you keep people coming back year after year, um, keep them engaged and keep them involved in the event as much as possible um, and really make them feel like they're still a big part of, you know, what was supposed to happen. No, that's great. So look, we're going to move on to the last open question here. Um, and then guys, remember, uh, you know, use the q and I haven't, I haven't been able to see how many are coming in. Hopefully there are some. But, you know, if you see anything or uh, if there's anything has really, uh, you know, tripped your trigger, please reach out. But you know, the last question would be for someone that let's say right now for someone that's out looking for a job or someone that's starting to maybe look to build their career, what would you suggest a path for that person to follow? And you know, using some of the, the best kind of ways to go about it, what, how would you push that person to start looking uh, to either advance their career or look for a job online? Well, I think, you know, professional organizations like this one are really critical to me in, in kind of doing that because it does allow you, it's sort of like a built-in opportunity to make those connections with people who are in your industry. And, um, you know, typically it's a broad spectrum of expert experience and tenure in the field. So you have a lot of people to kind of tap into. So I think I would say getting involved in professional organizations is probably more important now than it's ever been because you have those built-in opportunities. Um, something I always like to do when I, when I'm, whenever I'm interacting in situations like this is look and see if I, if I can, like who are the presenters who might be attending, who are the people who I might want to kind of connect with either during the event or after the event. Because what I'm always trying to do in my career and in my personal and professional life is kind of build my own personal board of directors. So trying to identify those individuals who might be able to help me better my career, help me hone a particular skill, someone I might look to for um, you know, assistance or guidance who's been in the industry for a long time. So I I think it's really helpful to not only attend events like this, but also really be tuned in to who are the people in your local community who are doing the things that you want to be doing and really make an effort to reach out to them and be in some of the same environments that they're in. So you have those opportunities to engage and see 
how they interact, what they do, find out if there's someone who you really think you would, you could connect with. And then, you know, as we've been saying, follow up with that, you know, send them a message, reach out to them in some way and start to build that relationship because they might be able to connect you with other people who have opportunities for a career path, or they might be able to help you provide, you know, provide guidance for you in ways that you might not have anticipated. So it's all about kind of establishing those connections and, and really being intentional with the people that you're looking to who might be able to help you and guide you in moving forward in your career. Yeah, yeah I think, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. um, I think in, in being intentional is really important. So as I kind of touched on before, um, when you're going into these virtual events, you know, have an idea in your head. Is there someone specific that you want to connect with um, in this event? Make sure you're sending them a personal message throughout the event. We touched on it before. If there's 20 plus people in the Zoom, you you might not get that one on one time with that person. So send them a, send them a message and set up a time to you know Zoom one on one with them at a different time. Um, another thing, like I said, don't be afraid to reach out to people that you went to school with or previous colleagues. Anyone um, like she like Aaron said that is doing something you want to be doing, reach out to those people um, and really take advantage of these virtual events. You never, you just never know who could connect you with who, so. Yeah, and I would say, again, I have to plug AAF and AAF Omaha offers a ton of great uh, programs and professional development. Professional development is one of the, the big pillars for why we exist and what we, we do. We wanna be able to have a great advertising, uh, marketing communications, uh, presence in all of our, wherever AAF might be, um, which again, opens you up to going beyond AAF Omaha. You know, you can find other programming. Maybe it's in Kansas City. Maybe it's in uh, Baltimore. Maybe it's in uh, Western Michigan. I think I just connected with somebody in Indianapolis. So finding that programming that you're looking for uh, is easier than ever. And you don't have to drive across the country or across state lines even to engage with it, um, but also see if you're looking to professionally grow and if it's within your own you know, business even, you know, see what your employers are offering. I know mine currently is offering free LinkedIn learning sessions um, and that's to all of us, um, which I'm busier than ever, so I don't have a lot of time, but it's also to um, unfortunately the too many people that we have that are furloughed right now. Um, allowing them to engage. And I know a lot of associations offer uh, different accreditations. So um, going and finding out what's relevant to you and whether it's a, a DES certificate or a CMP or whatever uh, letters you want to come after your name, now's a great time to go do it. Well, and I think to Jessica's earlier point about reaching out because most people do, most people do genuinely want to help if they can, as she said. Um, and so I think, you know, just being bold and being brave is critical and, and not, not selling yourself short. And also, you know, giving people the benefit of the doubt that it's not like they're going to see an email from you and be like, oh God, this person, oh no, I don't want to help this person. They're probably going to be like excited about it. I would be excited if someone was like, hey, can you help me? Because I've had a lot of people help me in my own life and I want to be able to pass that along to someone else. And so I think being bold and not being afraid to, you know, just put yourself out there a little bit is really critical right now. No, I think it's, and that's, I think that's great. I actually realized I skipped over a question. So I do have one more. Uh, are we doing okay on time? Yeah. All right. So we'll, we'll, we'll get in this last one and then uh, we'll open up for Q and A. But um, so really the last kind of open question here for you guys is, you know, obviously you all spend a lot of time uh, putting in effort digitally and we know social capital is, is more important than ever, but you know, for someone that might not be as experienced as it or uh, as fluent as it is mo as some others, you know, what are some things to keep in mind to show others that you are, you know, reciprocating that same amount of energy or that same amount of thoughtfulness that might be somebody who really, you know, succeeds personally, but how, how, do, how are they able to meet and kind of show you that they're also putting an effort online or digital? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I think 
you know, it's all about, and it might sound a little conceited, but touting your successes. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that has gone awry this year. Um, so celebrate what's gone well uh, and let people know. And even if it's just like, hey, I just had a great success with this. Uh, and I'm talking to, to people that are in, you know, competitive fields that, hey, we are, we're in the same space, we're competing for the same clients, but I just wanted to let you know that this was really a, a great success for us. Um, what have you found successful in there? And turn it back to them and, you know, they can share with it uh, what they will, but I think that just being able to find something to celebrate uh, this year is, is really good. And another shameless plug, no better way to do that than the American Advertising Awards. So those should be open. Uh, if they're not, they'll be open soon. We good? We can yeah, move on. That was great. Nothing to add. Nothing, Nothing to add. Nothing, Nothing to add. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over now to Terry. Um, hopefully we have some awesome Q&A uh, coming in and um, you know, Terry, I leave it to you now to kind of uh, toss those off to our panelists. Great, Alec, thank you. We do have one really excellent question and I think Tom can address it. Tom, why don't you lead into it? You saw that question. Yeah, so the questions, um, do you have any hints or tips and tricks about bringing participants into a virtual booth at a conference? Which is tricky. It depends on the platform that you're utilizing, what they offer. Um, but I would say, when you're you're talking to these trade shows, these expos, um, these events that you're going to, ask them what their offering is and what they're considering as far as their sponsorships, their their virtual booth space go, um, because they should be gauging your buy-in before they they make a selection. Um, that would be number one. And then number two is if there's networking that allows you to go and talk to attendees, go out and find those attendees. Um, it, it's difficult in a virtual space because you're not in a physical booth or on the floor. You can't just you know, pick up a conversation or make eye contact with somebody. So it does take a bit more work, um, but also you know, striking while the iron's hot. If you've got lead gen in there, uh, give them a call back right after. Shoot them an email right after. Uh, I attended a, a virtual event and my phone was ringing off the hook from good salespeople uh, afterwards or people that were engaging in the networking feature. Uh, and then there's also the the gimmick if you, you offer something. You know, I've got a pair of work gloves here that I got from that same conference. And they said, hey, wanted to see if you have time to, to take a call so I can get your address to send you these work gloves, but also see if there's anything that I can do for you. So understand that the leads, as much as you want them to, and you pray they might come to you, they're not gonna come to you. Um, just organically, people are engaging in, in a lot of the content that's being provided. So. Uh, maybe finding social content out there and promoting around the event as well. Uh, I see a lot of people being successful promoting off the platform uh, just through their social media channels, utilizing event hashtags and whatnot, and then making those connections and, and those follow-ups. And like Jess mentioned, touch base with them on LinkedIn. If, if you think that they're somebody that's worthwhile talking or they are going to want to hear what you have to say, um, that, that's my best advice. I don't know the industry that you're in, um, but happy to connect offline if you'd like as well. Well, and I think it's also, this is true of like in-person conferences, and I think it still stands true for virtual conferences, which is that sometimes if you're able to offer some sort of experience in your booth, it's more likely to draw people. So whether that's an educational opportunity or like a virtual, I know like I'm in the EAC industry. So um, we can create like virtual rooms for people to be in where you can actually go in and look around and play with stuff and do things, you know, it's like an interactive experience as opposed to just like plopping on and being like, 
okay, you know, we're all here. Great. We're just staring at each other. Um, I think if you can find a way to create an actual experience in that virtual space, that might be a bit more of a draw for people than just like, come visit our booth, you know? Um, so think about ways that you can really kind of foster that in those virtual spaces. Yeah. And have good content. I mean, end of the day, it's about the content that you have out there, whether you're pitching it and, and sharing it or whether it's a video that's in that virtual booth space, uh, have all your social links that are linked in there. And I'm talking to what I know about our virtual booth space, but have that content that people can gravitate towards and, and make it be sticky so they can learn as much about you as they want and then hopefully make that connection. I, I believe that was the only question that we had Alec, if you and Paula would like to wrap, unless anyone wants to type in a question that they might have held off on until now. We were just really good and we answered any and all questions. You were excellent. <laughs> Paula? Erin, Jessica, Tom, and Alec for taking the time today to do our Ad Connect with us. We're very appreciative for everything that you could help us with and I think everybody has learned a lot about navigating networking virtually. I would, I am Paula Steenson, president of Paula Presents and owner, and along with my animals. I serve on the AAF board of directors and co-chair AAF Omaha's membership committee with ALEC. It's been great to working with all of you on doing these creative and new events this year, along with webinars and virtual programming to benefit our members. Speaking of our members and member benefits, we have two member perks to award today to Joe Butler from Cox Media and Cody Felberg from Woodman Life. We're giving them $5 Godfather's gift cards from our member perk partners at Godfather's Pizza. Jill and Cody, your gift cards will be mailed to you. Today, we'd also like to thank our elite sponsor from Centro for their generosity to AAF Omaha. And we'd also like to thank Frost Media Group for setting this all up for us. If you're looking for sponsorship opportunities to reach our advertising, marketing, and communications community, contact AAF Omaha office for upcoming opportunities. Now mark your calendars and plan to join some of our upcoming events. On November 19th, there is Boom Roasted. We're taking it to the next level this year from 4 to 5 p.m. Watch your inbox for a list of agency heads that will be roasting. Marianne O'Brien from OBI Creative, Greg Anderson from Bailey Larman, Wendy Wiseman from Zayson Company, and Lynn Wyman from Kid Glove. Attendance for the roast is free with a suggested goodwill offering of $5 for individuals or $25 for groups of five or more watching from their offices together. On November 19th, we'll be hosting a panel discussion, Going for the Gold. The American Advertising Awards is one of industry's largest creative competitions, attracting nearly 35,000 professional and student entries each year through their local cup competitions. The mission of the American Advertising Awards, formerly the Addies, is to recognize and reward the spirit of creative excellence in advertising. We'll be discussing how to get ready to enter the 20 21 American Advertising Awards. We will hear from our area creative directors and past judges on what they look for during judging. Watch your email box for more about this virtual event. And last, save the date for AAF Omaha's annual holiday party, this year going virtual. The party will take place on December 15th at 5.30 p.m. The online silent auction will go live on December 4th with bidding through December 15th. Our membership team and our board members have secured many wonderful silent auction items and raffle items. This will be an event you won't wanna miss. Again, thank you so much to Alec, Jessica, Aaron, and Tom for joining us today for Ad Connect.